beautiful, how you doing today? Welcome back, or welcome if this is your first time joining. And if it's your first time joining, please don't forget to subscribe, please. Now, I'm going to explain to you five ways on how men in prison protect the gay guys, okay? Protect yours truly. And I actually personally have experienced each form of these protections except for one. And I'm going to save which one I haven't uh, experienced for the end, for those of you that are interested. And the reason why I'm saving it for the end is because I want to see if you'll guess. As I go down this list real quick, I want to see if you'll be able to guess which one, which form of protection do you think that I have not actually received. You, If you've been watching for a minute, you'll probably, you might be able to guess. And I want to know your comment below. Like, tell me, be like, oh, I guess that. I, I, as you were saying such and such, I thought whatever. Or whatever. Or if you think that there's something on this list that I didn't mention, I would like to hear as well, too. Because I can elaborate later or, you know, whatever. I love you guys' comments. I really love you guys' comments. Don't forget to like the video, too. I appreciate you guys. So, the first way is through groups. Now, this is something that... I myself experienced I didn't realize that like you know a couple of guys would come to my defense when I had an issue with something until I had seen it but it's a couple of times that I had a group of guys like help me out when I was at the state facility one of the dudes that was getting really aggressive like with me while in the cell there was t-shirt KJ and stars they helped me like get out of that situation and then later they even recruited some of their friends to like keep the dude away from me because then the dude was still like trying to you know come at me crazy just to just talk to me really he wasn't threatening me or anything like that but you know then they got some like you know some of their tougher friends or maybe even some gang member people to kind of like you know threaten him but there was that time then again later when I was at the private facility there was a couple different times where I would have like you know just some guys in the pod come to my rescue as a matter of fact I had even gotten a charge from a CO it was like a bogus charge it, but it was a serious charge it was a 100 they have 100 series and 200 series charges 100 series are more like a uh, higher higher security like charges and if you catch a charge like that you can actually be charged money you can your time can be like extended you can be moved to a higher level or all three so it was really crazy that this woman just charged me and it was because actually she had been dealing with boss the prison sugar daddy that I had and then he just kinda like cut off everybody he was dealing with people on the phone and COs I didn't know this until later but he just kinda like dismissed everybody in order to pursue me like 100 percent and she obviously was salty about that and she wrote me this charge and not only him how that charge actually got dismissed is he paid off the unit manager who oversaw like um, institutional charges and that's how it actually was dismissed but prior to him actually intervening like that because I just stopped talking to him he didn't even know what happened as soon as I figured out that it was her and there was no reason for me to catch this charge uh, in my mind I thought like well this dude is bad news I don't need to be getting involved with nobody like this that can get me hemmed up in some charges for no reason just purely for existing so he didn't know anything about it and I was telling like you know the the people in the pod my my, my girls my home girls the queens and they was telling the different guys and there was like four different people that were you know working with like the hearing officer to try and argue this and get it thrown out ahead of time but it ended up boss was the one with the, the power to actually get it like removed but not only oh and then in the program then when I was in the program with Cam there was plenty of times that Cam would come to my defense and save me with a lot of things but then also like you know when people would try to uh, give me like penalties in the program you can get like tickets and stuff and when people would try to give me like penalties or just you know maybe get me in trouble with the counselors to get moved out or something because of one reason or another like there would be guys in there that they would hear about this and they would help 
like resolve situations sometimes before I even knew like I would be finding out what happened as it was resolved already so guys they help out in groups like strength in numbers and then I've seen it done with a lot of queens there's usually most queens I kinda just by luck I guess had guys that would help me either because they thought that I was cool like I'm not the average queen I'm not causing a lot of trouble I'm not stepping out on my man I'm not you know degrading myself by being a penitentiary hoe like there were some guys that respected that and that's why you know people kinda like thought I was cool and then obviously then there was guys that just you know behind the scenes had a crush on me or you know hope that I liked him or something or you know maybe I would break up with Cam and get with them and then those guys would help too but typically the average queen actually usually it, mandatory it's mandatory for them to have like they call them pieces queens call these guys pieces guys that are just on standby that they keep happy and the guys you know they give the guys attention and maybe do a little something something here and there with these guys and the, the these guys are just their protection so they have their husband their main dude that you know is, is their husband you know source of provider or whatever but then they have just a other group of guys that whenever they get in trouble even if they get in trouble with their man they're gonna turn to these guys and these guys are gonna straighten out their man you know um, and actually, come think about, I even had some guys, sometimes when Cam and I would be arguing, that they would go and not straighten Cam out. I would never allow anybody to do nothing like that. But they would kind of like argue to my defense, I guess, uh, at Cam, that he needs to act right kind of thing and treat me right or something like that. And I didn't send these guys on, on to them. It's just, that's just how it is. Queens have protection in prison. And the first way is with groups. Second way is with the officers. Usually, you can, like as the queen, you can actually recruit officers yourself by being friendly with officers, which I didn't actually do this until later, and it was kind of by accident. I am somebody that likes girls. I always have. I just love girls. I just connect with them. I just click with them. I just love girls. I wish girls actually ran the world. And I'm sure probably most men, gay or straight actually, I feel like wouldn't really agree with me. Maybe more gay guys would than straight guys. But um, I do. I feel like the world would be a lot better if women were the ones that were actually in charge. You know, because... They just handle things better. Don't get me wrong, they definitely can be, you know, catty sometimes, or jealous, or, um, I don't know if I want to say the word emotional, but, uh, driven by emotions sometimes, but it's necessary, I think. I think that that gets you to a better resolve with things most of the time, as opposed to the way men you know, especially like heterosexual men, deal with things. Personally, I don't know. I just think it would just be better. But anyway, but because of that, I just, as I was at this private facility, you know, there was a lot of black people that uh, ran the prison. And also, they had a lot of females working the prison. The most that I had ever seen. And they were black females, which I love. I love all types of girls, all kinds of girls, every girl. But as somebody who was raised by a black woman, and I, my sister and I are a year apart, we grew up with my sister really close. Like, I just, I love, you know, black women, of course. And then, especially as I got older and I started to realize the bullshit that women in general have to deal with. But then especially, like, my black women, I, it's disgusting what they have to, like, endure just daily to 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 live you know so i just always have had like mad love and mad respect for black women and being in this compound i just kind of like naturally started clicking with them and you know they they'd be like oh you look like prince and stuff and you know girls like gay guys anyway and then especially on in prison the female officers it's kind of like a love-hate relationship either they really like the gay guys because they can gather information about the men from the gay guys obviously or they really hate the gay guys because of the fact that the gay guys get so much attention from the men, you know? Like, yeah, it's one or the other. Like, either they really hate the gay guys or, or the queens, whatever, or they really love them. But so a homosexual can recruit officers themselves, and then now you have a CO or a couple of COs, you know, like, at, at your disposal, I guess, if you need some help. 
which I definitely have utilized that from time to time. Again, this is not strategically done on my part. I It just sort of happened. Like, I just kind of got cool with some of these girls and women, and I just, we naturally clicked. And then when I w we would talk, and then when I'd have an issue and I'd tell them about it, they'd help me, you know? Or the main way of how officers are, like, um, you know, used to protect the queens, the gay guys, is through your husband, which I experienced that as well. Boss, he actually had a lot of pull with everybody, like inmates, the administration, in all areas, not only COs, but unit managers in the education building, like the kitchen, just everywhere. He just, the investigator, like he, he just made it a priority to make good connections with as many people as he could. And it was smart, but scary for me sometimes, unless it was working to my advantage. <laughs> and there were times that if I had a problem with something, he knew the exact person to go to to resolve it, and he would help. So groups, officers, and then, oh, and I just realized I'm telling y'all all my experiences. <laughs> all right, well, then you got three, three out of five that you can guess from. So I'm not going to tell you the last uh, three, I guess, my personal experiences. But um, the third way, I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> The third way is commissary. Commissary is used as protection because people need stuff in prison. Nobody has anything. It's very, it's a very tough struggle to get things in prison. The only real way that people are comfortable in prison as it relates to commissary is if you have somebody sending you money. But if you don't have somebody sending you money, then you need to get a hustle of some kind, which there's a lot of hustles and there's a lot of people that do hustles because most people don't have somebody sending them money all the time. And even if they do have it, it doesn't stay consistent, you know, like maybe they might do it and then you ask them again and then they flake on you or, you know, they have some excuse or, or they just don't answer the phone, you know, or they just send it on their time, you know, so people then they they get a hustle uh in or in a, a hustle as a way to get commissary because you still need to eat and you need hygiene and even like stationary and and uh what's the word property like clothes and stuff and socks boxers you know you can't exchange you get state towels state socks state boxers and like state deodorant and toothpaste and a toothbrush and a comb but uh those things you can't even exchange the the deodorant the comb and the toothpaste it's disgusting garbage stuff anyway like worse than something you would get at the dollar store dollar store brand i'm even talking about like it's really bad quality terrible taste toothpaste you know your teeth feel worse than before when you even brushed them but nevertheless once you get it that's all you get but the socks boxers and t-shirt and towels, you're not even allowed to exchange that stuff until six months to a year that you've had it. And even then, it's not like, you know, okay, just go and exchange it. You have to put in a, a form. You have to wait for them to respond back if they even respond back, you know, and then you have to submit another form. And then after they respond back, then you have to wait for whenever it is that they're going to call you. It could take literally like eight months to a year and a half to get a change of stuff so it's very normal to see people with holes in their stuff like holes in the towel rip towels like a rag holes in the socks cam used to have holes in his socks from playing basketball so i would try to switch out our socks all the time holes in the boxes he used to have you know he's kind of heavy down there so he used to have like holes in his boxers <laughs> you know but um I made sure to get him some fresh underwear, but, uh, yeah, so we got it off property, but if you don't have that kind of stuff, then you need it. So when a queen or a homosexual gets into some trouble or maybe, like, a runs up a debt or just gets someone angry with them or something like that, because queens get into trouble a lot, either intentionally or unintentionally, it just happens a lot, uh, their husband usually, or maybe one of their pieces, somebody that they're cool with, will use commissary as a way to protect them and pay the people off. 
The fourth way of how queens are protected in prison is through control. They actually will control the behavior of the queen because some of the trouble that a queen will get caught up in is brought on by how they interact with the guys. You know, queens, gay people in prison, they get so, like, adjusted to having a flirtatious type of interaction with men because that's how you get what you need. That's how you survive. I actually am still trying to shake that. Like, I am loyal to a man when I am committed to this man and it has been Cam all this time even though I'm out here so it's made it very strange for me when trying to interact with guys out here because I don't I've lost how to interact with a guy like in a normal way you know first of all I feel like most straight guys they don't really always know how to interact with a homosexual anyway and uh, the homosexual probably sets the tone, even out here, I would think. You know, if you're just funny and goofy or whatever, then they're just going to make them feel at ease, and then you don't have no interest in trying to turn them out or something, so then they, they'll feel comfortable, and then now you all have that kind of, like, kind of connection, you know, or whatever it may be. So me, I don't know anymore really how to interact with a regular guy except to flirt with them, really, but it's uncomfortable because I don't want to make this guy, I don't want to send this guy the wrong signals because I'm not going to step out on my husband, you know, my fiance, my, my boyfriend, uh, so it's just made me just kind of quiet and not really talk to too many guys, which that's not a good thing when I work at the grocery store and you have to work with people, you know, you don't want to come across as like rude or like not a team player or something so it's something that I'm still working on because I've gotten so used to that's I don't know how else really to make conversation other than talk about work like I just try to keep things work related but anyway that kind of behavior and this is me I'm like a mild version of how queens are in there in prison the average queen they really go out of their way to to flirt <laughs> I'm talking about like for example, Katrina used to flash her titties at everybody, her butt and everything at everybody, like, you know, just as jokes, as kicks, knowing damn well that it's turning the people on. She would make dick jokes all the time, you know, like, on purpose to kind of, like, bring the conversation to that. That's beyond flirting to me. Me, flirting is, like, I'm just giggling and laughing and, you know, um, maybe, like, leaning too close to them or something like that. Like, you know, playful type of type of flirtation but uh i'm not doing that with these guys out here you know so as a way to protect the homosexual the husbands will control their queens like you're only allowed to dress a certain way you're only allowed to talk to s specific types of people and you can uh only um speak about certain things. And actually, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that I lied to y'all at the beginning of this video. I've experienced each one of these ways. The way that I was going to say that I hadn't, if you guessed it, you might have guessed, is the control, obviously. I'm, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, there ain't no way I'm letting anybody control me. But now that I think about it, actually, I have experienced this with Boss and with Cam, actually, because I think it just naturally happens. Boss, he made it so I didn't speak to anybody, even though that's what I had wanted. But then also, he did only have it where I only was able to speak to certain people. And if I even tried to talk to somebody else, they wouldn't talk to me, you know? Like, I didn't want to talk to a lot of people, so I wasn't worried about, you know, that part. But some of the people that maybe I did want to just engage with or I had known prior to dating boss, if I went to talk to them, now it's like they, they didn't switch up. They're acting different towards me, you know. But yeah, that's a form of control. And then with Cam, I used to dress, I mentioned in an earlier video that I used to wear like tight shirts. And sometimes I all my state shirts, actually, I would cut them 
um, at the bottom so this way they were shorter because they were real loose and maybe they weren't that tight but then I would just cut it where like the bottom of my belly like the 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 my belly is just kind of staying peekaboo just a little bit just to look kind of cute like a little halter top type thing you know the guys loved it but I got used to wearing that you know just just wearing it on the rec yard or in the pod or something and Cam put a stop to that he didn't want me <laughs> wearing uh, those type of shirts so I didn't. He didn't want me really wearing my sweatpants. I could wear shorts under the sweatpants, but I used to just wear my sweatpants like commando, and it hugged my butt, and he didn't like that either. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I guess in, to some degree, I did kind of experience it a little bit. And then the other half of the control is actually I made it for myself. I, he used to have a lot of people hanging out in our cell all the time, but the people were always hitting on me like any time that he's not around and sometimes in the beginning of our relationship even when he was around so I would talk to him about how uncomfortable that made me and then he started limiting who came in but then even then I was comfortable with who would be coming in like we both were friends with them or they were nice enough where I didn't feel uncomfortable but even just that Cam started to get over time he started to get jealous of that and then nobody was allowed in our cell like ever like nobody was ever allowed in our cell period you know so yeah so control is a form of protection and the last one that I'm sure is of no surprise which is why I saved it for last fights of course like the guys they get into fights you know in order to protect the queens and I've experienced that too many times actually the first time the first time that wasn't a fight actually was at the jail the investigator thought that I was going to be the cause of a riot breaking out in the freaking trustee pod and that was so far from reality like it was just completely over dramatized but that was the first time that I like even considered that a gay person could be the reason behind a fight and then later when I was in prison I witnessed it time and time again with almost every queen that I had known <laughs> and then me myself I experienced it between uh, Brent which was the first like prisoner guy that I had ever like slept with uh, really cute and young oh my gosh she was so cute but uh, the sex was it was interesting he got into a fight with two different guys behind me and then Mountain Man, he got into a fight with T-Shirt when T-Shirt pulled me into, this for the Prison Diary people, when T-Shirt pulled me into the cell and kissed me, well, we kissed, uh, Mountain Man and T-Shirt got into a fight, which was just kind of like a silly fight. And then when I was at the private facility, Boss fought several people, probably like four different people uh, over me. Two times it was because I was being bothered by these people and it actually might have been a third time actually now that I think about it and then there were two times that I didn't know about it until later he, one of the times he had told me and then the other time one of the queens told me a friend of mine she told me that he had gotten into a fight and it's just because of I guess some guy coming at boss seeing if boss would like allow me to sleep with him or something like he needed to give permission for me to be a hoe and boss was obviously insulted by it for one because he knew me that that's I'm not interested in doing that and I think he felt insulted like for me and then for two the main reason I think why he fought these guys is because he himself obviously felt disrespected because it's like whoa what makes you think that I would let you slide up in my you know bitch <laughs> So yeah, those are the five ways of how gay guys are protected in prison. I'm so happy to be making these videos, I gotta tell you, because where else are you going to hear this stuff? Like, you think any of these guys are gonna tell you this this stuff on these channels? No, heck no. Like, I'm telling you, I got plenty more where that came from. Nice juicy secrets. <laughs> But if you got any questions or if you think that maybe I left something out, you know, please leave a comment. And uh, I love you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Please be careful. You know, I will see you in the next video. Bye.